faith grow every father day to day, Lord God. For each amount of faith, Lord God, comes with responsibility, Heavenly Father. And Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to be our shield in the time of trouble, Lord God. Lord God, when the storms of life is raging, Lord God, make our faith stronger in you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 with Darren and Lady C. Prince, your host. Doing marriage the way that empowers us to prosper, standing on the word of God as our foundation, and a lifestyle full of faith, not just talk, but an abundant walk in Christ. I know y'all see me doing a lot of moving around. Like I told them last night, like, I'm used to having my children here. And it's, it, my, my two, I call them my road dogs. But both of them in college. And at night, it's like a whole new experience of me doing everything I'm going to do. And I'm like, Lord, I'm just waiting on you because you're expanding my network. So I need you to just give me the employees, God. So I'll be running around, running around. ladies at Bethlehem Baptist Church. I think it was about a month ago, maybe. And I was just amazed at what they did and how wonderful they did. And I know some of them and I don't know all of them. But I was just, it just filled my spirit to see, because a lot of times you see a lot of younger kids and, and, and little babies want to be praying for worship. And, but when you're able to see Adults who can mentor me, who inspire me. When I look at the things they've done in their lives, and I'm like, well, Lord, they are willing to praise and worship you through that is it inspired. So I wanted them to come out today and inspire you as well. Because yesterday we dealt with passion. So today we're going to deal with pressure. So I want these ladies to just minister to you as they know how. And this is the Theo Ratcliffe Dancers. Mm -hmm. Move that in the city, Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, when God says a different thing, sometimes we want to do stuff, but that ain't what he wants us to do. So I'm just waiting on him. We'll figure that out later on. So, as I look at my life, though, I realize that my passions were being blocked. They weren't being blocked by God, but they were being blocked by my pressures and my fears. I want you to understand that God wasn't blocking what I wanted. I was blocking what I wanted because of my fear and because of pressure in my life. So let me go to my subject and my text before I get to talk because I want y'all to be like, you really know how to do a sermon. Trust me, if you know Rigor Peace, you know I know how to do a sermon. He gonna make you learn it. So, <laughs> let's look at Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Look at Psalm 118. We're gonna go to verse 5. Psalm 118, verse 5. And I'm reading from the King James Version. If you have it, say amen. Amen. Okay. It says, I called upon the Lord in distress, and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? You may be seated. Now, I read this scripture last night to them for a scripture, and I told them, I said, when I was preparing for this conference, it was a lot of nervousness inside of me, and it was a lot of fear inside of me. It wasn't that I didn't know how to set up a conference, it was the fact that it was me that did the conference. Because I'm always the person behind the scenes doing stuff for everybody else, and I'm like, God, I can't do this. You want me to be the person in the front this time. You want me to be the person to orchestrate everything. God, I can't give you that. I'd rather be behind the scenes like you've been letting me be the whole time. And he said, no. And he presented this scripture to me. I will not fear. I will not fear. What can man do to me? So when I read it, I was like, mm, do it, God. So my subject for today is, you can't stop me. You ain't gonna stop me. Cause I ain't gonna quit. All right. Now, you be out and I got some teachers in here. I'm a teacher too. But I'm not gonna talk correct grammar sometimes during this sermon, so get over it. I'm not gonna be cute during this sermon sometimes, so get over it. And understand that you can't stop me. You ain't gonna stop me. Cause I ain't gonna quit. As I said to you before, my passions were being blocked by my pressures, my fears. And see, let me define a pressure to you because a lot of people don't understand exactly what pressure is. Pressure is a continuous physical force just driving and hitting against something. Just against a constant pressure, just hitting it. Now imagine if this was something soft, eventually it would what? Break. Pressure will cause you to break. Pressure will cause you to stop. Now let's look at some of these pressures in my life, and possibly, I'm sure, in your life or somebody's life that you know. But let's look at these pressures that's pushing against you to keep you from achieving your passion and your purpose in life. Family. Yes, 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 we all know family is a blessing. It's great to have family. It's wonderful that the family is there. But let's get real. Mothers, we're the ones that take care of our children all day long. When they're sick, we gotta get them with them. We gotta get them up for school. We gotta feed them, we gotta clothe them. We gotta make sure they're mentally stable, physically stable. We gotta do so much for our children. We gotta take them to the football practice, we gotta take them to the games. And the people that are not here now, at the parade with their child, or going to the month with their child, you're going to tutor with your child, you're doing this with your child, See how you're being pulled? That's what mothers have to do. But that's okay. That's what we're supposed to do. And then, when it comes to your husband, you gotta love him. You gotta nourish him. You gotta physically support him. And then plus, sometimes you gotta baby him like you baby kids. Am I right? Don't act like that's not true. But then, we got some people who got a boyfriend and they treat like a husband because they don't want nobody to know they're married. I've been there. I'm not going to. 
Don't try to raise your hand if you're not getting it. You don't got no. I'm just gonna talk about me. So you get tired. You forget about yourself. You lose yourself in the process of taking care of your children, taking care of your husband. You forget about yourself. Your hair might go ragged, your nails might go ragged, you're tired, your back hurting. You forget to feed yourself sometimes. I don't know about y'all, but there's times I had to take my kids to football practice, take my daughter to go get her a drink because she wanted to be in the homecoming parade, had to go do this and that. By the time I got home, I was too tired to eat. I was fine then. <laughs> Just saying, you forget about yourself. So family can be that pressure. Then you got friends. You have those friends that you love them. You, you're going to do anything for them. But you got a friend who is always just broken down. That every time you speak, you got to help them. You got to be there for them. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when are you going to realize that you can't always give and not receive? You got that job. The job, you know what it's like. You try to do your best at your job because that's what you were taught to do. You give everything to your job, and then you got a boss that every time your boss speak, you run. Every time your boss say something, you jump. Right? You been there? Because I know that's how my dad always taught me. When you go to a job, do everything you can to make yourself be important in that job. So when my boss thought that I was doing it, Jesus. it didn't matter that I didn't like the job. I was trying to be my best. But then I realized when it came down to promotion, or when it came down to people realizing who was doing the work, my name was never called. And it will tell you why. Because why would a boss want you to move out of position when you're helping them and they don't have to do nothing? They want you to stay where you are. Because when you move out the way, that means everything they haven't done is exposed. So you got a job, a job that's becoming a pressure to you in your life. Finances. Can anybody attest to me that finances can be a pressure in your life? Now I can really say that because you know, I come from a family with money, but when you get to be stupid, you got to be, you gonna be broke. So I can attest, that's my, that's my testimony. Finances, Lord, can be a pressure. See, you, you, you see people with different things. Somebody got this, somebody got a beam, somebody got a mink coat, they got the nice shoes. Oh, they just got the new boots on, and I want them. All right. I want them. So my eyes are going to make me want them. But then my eyes are not thinking about my pocket. Right. So then I got to go get another job just to pay the bills. So who you are working two jobs, it's a pressure. Finances can be a pressure to you, and you don't even realize what you're doing to yourself is not God, but then you gotta come to church and pray, God, will you please help my finances? And he already had blessed them, but you want to reach past where you are. Then some of us are taking care of a man who is not even taking care of you. Don't look around. Don't look around and talk about me. I've been that one. I've been that one. I took care of a man who didn't take care of me. So that means I had to get a new job. That means I had to make sure he looked good every day. Make sure he was happy. There are a lot of women that do it. And they think it's okay because these decided to tell us that there are so many gay men out there that don't have any men out there for you. Society tells you that there are no more men out there other than the married men. So we got women trying to be a side piece. So see, society will tell you something wrong. So I decided to have you going crazy, trying to be something you're not financially when you need to be who you are that time. Right. Yeah, yeah. See, and there are people who are, are taking, like I said, the side piece. Uh -huh. You got women taking care of side pieces and men taking care of side pieces. You take care of a whole other home. You got to work two or three jobs to keep your side piece happy so your side piece won't tell nobody. Yeah. So your finances are messing with your pressure. Just pressure, pressure. Unnecessary pressure that God didn't have anything to do with. Who did it? You. Now you got to look at your health. Y'all know that's important. Your health can be a pressure on you. Your health is failing because when you were young, you was out there partying and drinking and smoking, doing drugs because you knew you could do it because you were young and you get away with it. But now you're old and ooh. You don't feel good. Now you're old and you're tired. You got to take B12 out of the 
knowledge just to make it through the day. You gotta get your vitamin P, D P, and vitamin E, vitamin D two, and all the pills to make it through the day. Because when you were younger, you weren't thinking and doing what you want to do. You see, I remember, I remember hearing, "Don't go outside without the shoes on." Y'all yeah, know, don't look crazy, because you know your grandma and your mama said, don't lie that side, don't lie that about shoes on, and now your knees aching, your back aching, and grandma walking better than you. Because grandma went outside with shoes on, and you walking like grandma should be walking, and grandma walking like you supposed to walk. Because we don't think about him. We don't think it's important, but it becomes a pressure on you. And when you have pressure on you, when you have worries on you, when you have stress on you, it starts breaking down your body. You start getting high blood pressure, diabetes, headaches, cancer. Don't, your body is attacking itself because you are attacking your body with stress and mix. Jesus, Jesus. Have mercy. Stress, pressure, just pressure. Jesus. Then we got something that we have to worry about people, how we look. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How we look. Uh -huh. I was talking to one of my ministry friends and I said to him, I said, um, I said, well, you know how I dress, you know how I like to dress. And he said, well, you just can't dress like that all the time. And I said, well, it's either going to be me in a, a, a dress with some heels on, throw them off, y'all know I do, take my shoes off in the pool pit, or either be in relaxed so I can talk to you like God needs me to talk to. See, we got that, you worry about what people say disease. How many of you got a disease? I've been there. Worry about what somebody got to say about you disease. And see, when you worry about what people got to say about you, you feel like you got to be everything. You got to keep up with the Joneses, as they say. You got to dress like them. You got to act like them. You got to be like them. You got to be in their little society, their little group, their little clique. No. Those people not going to pay your bills. When you get sick, nine times ten, all they want to do is call. If they call. If you, if you lose your house, they're not going to help you get it back. So I'm sorry. I, I, I just can't be the worry about what people say syndrome disease. So there's pressure. Pressure that you deal with on a daily basis. You can just imagine what these teenagers are dealing with. They're dealing with so much. These young ladies that, that, that we don't even talk to sometimes. It's the elders used to talk to me. When they were they snatching up. It didn't matter whether Joe or Mary was somewhere. They were going to snatch your hand. I stopped what you did. We don't even do that no more. They almost don't even say nothing anymore. Because you worry whether the child will cuss you out or not. But those elders didn't care back then. But those kids are going through more than we are. But pressure. Pressure, you, get, you, you got enough to deal with. So why would you do anything else besides that to let the devil use the harm? Why? Why would you do anything, give the devil any ammunition, to use against you to harm you. Don't do it. Hmm. There you go. Don't do it. I don't know about you, but the devil, the devil used to try to torment me. See, he was using my transgressions. The things I used to do. Because I was worried and, and, and was scared what people would say if they found out about the things I did. So he used my transgressions to pressure me to do whatever else he wanted me to do. Because you know you got no friends who supposed to be your friend. Because you know, your, your mama need to know what you did. They say it, but they did it. Basically, they say it. If you can't do this for me, I'm going to tell your mama what you did. The devil using people to keep you where you are. See, I had a few people found and not about me shacking. Remember, I just said a lot of people I go with and say, that's my husband. Uh-uh. Did nobody go, go to the courthouse? Did nobody stay in front of a pastor and get married? Oh, that's my husband, honey. I didn't want nobody to know I was shaking them. That real piece of door. Uh-uh. I didn't want people to know that I hated who I was. Oh, no. You can see the smile on my face. You came, hey, boy, hey, boy. Every time somebody see me, what they say, oh, she got, she's so positive. I don't never see her cut up. She's so sweet. But inside, I'm hating myself, and there's so many women out there like that now. Yes, yes. It might be some of you in here right now, hating who you are. Jesus. I was scared and feared that people would find out that sex and love with my demons. There were things I was fighting with because I'm trying to figure out if I love this man, am I supposed to give him my body? If I love this man, am I supposed to do what he say do? People, 
People don't want to talk about that in church. But sex and love can be a demon to a woman or a man. And it's time that we stop hiding it and stop acting like it's not there because we got a whole generation of children that's being destroyed because we can't talk about what's going on. We can't tell our children, baby, I'm messed up. This is what I did. Don't you do the same thing. We can't get up in the pulpit and talk about sex is not the right thing to do, but I did. But let me tell you what you shouldn't do. It's time out for that. But see, God knew this, but the devil knew this too. So he used it against me to keep me where I was and continue doing it. Jesus. But I was done. See, and, and see, my mom and daddy, how I said, I said, I'm a positive person. People, I said, oh, she's so positive. Well, boo, y'all don't know me. You don't know me. See, I didn't want people to know my temper. I didn't want people to know I could get just as ghetto. I, I might be from the suburbs, but boo, boo, put me somewhere, and I act like I'm from the ghetto of the world. All right. the people that, I don't want people to know I push you out of me. I lay you down in a minute. My dad made me stop playing basketball, because girls used to pull my hair. And why would they do that? Because I'm going to elbow you just like I was playing for the Celtics. Back in the day, you know how the Celtics used to elbow and hip hop the same thing. They didn't want people to know it. I, I feared because I didn't want people to know that I, I felt inadequate. I wasn't enough. I wasn't my brothers. I wasn't smart like them. I didn't want people to think that I, I felt like them. I didn't want people to feel like I couldn't be my mother. I couldn't be the woman that everybody looked at as being beautiful and smart. The, the, the radiant preacher's wife wore big hats and pretty dresses and had the purse and the shoes to match. Earrings and everything just did that. I didn't want people to know. I didn't want to be her. And I couldn't be her. So the devil kept using that against me. My pressure, my fears, he used them against me to keep me where I was. He was trying to let people know who I was at the same time. But God already knew who I was. He created me. God knows who you are inside. You can, you can be saying to people all day. You can say, Lord, thank you, hallelujah, in church all day, but God knows who you are. Yes, he yes, But at the same time, God was trying to tell me. He kept whispering in my head because he never leaves you. But he'll send somebody, or he'll just whisper, or he'll show you something on TV or anything around just to tell you. God used to tell me. He was sneak to me. You know, I don't know if y'all realize, but God's a real, he real sneak. God paid attention to me. But he used to tell me that he could break the chain of what I was going through. He could break the chains of bondage that I created. They couldn't stop me if I would let God break those chains. He could, he could break the chains of pain, of the pain that dwelled inside of me from things that happened to me. Because they couldn't stop me because God was greater. He could break the chains of shame that I felt when the people found out what I was doing. He could stop those, those things from happening. He, he could break the chains of fear. A fear that I created. Worrying about everybody else. Learning what I was doing. When they thought I was doing even worse. Jesus. Jesus. I was stressing myself. And there's some of you that might be stressing yourself. There might be some young ladies you know that are stressing themselves. But see, unless you stop to listen to God, you're going to be scared. You're going to be stressed. Have you ever paid attention when, when you get scared, you tense up, somebody's in the And you know you're just tense up. When you tense up, you can't let anything in, can you? You can't receive. Your body is, 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 is not in a controlled environment to receive. So the devil knows if you're scared, God can't give you what you need. So he's going to keep you in that fearful, fearful thought process. He's going to keep your body tensed up. He's going to keep your mind scared and under control so that he can use you. See, see, fear, fear will stop you right there in your chest. But fear will also make you run. <laughs> it will make you run. It will make you run. It's going to change you. You're going to run, right? And you're going to keep running right past your purpose. Right past your destiny. Right past those passions that you had, you're going to run right past Let me tell you some things I want you to, to say with you. There's three things that I want you to take with you. Three things. And you can write these things down. 
The first thing I want you to take with you is God is greater than your fears. All right. God is greater than your fears. See, God created you. Your flaws, <laughs> they weren't flaws until you made them. But see, God can take those flaws and use them for his glory. Right. Use them to elevate you. See, in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 and 10, it says, the Satan tore me to me. He used my fears and he, he used them against me. And it goes on to say, I begged the Lord to take them away. I begged the Lord to take them away. And each time, each time he said, my grace is all you. My power works best in your weakness. Because when you're weak, God can, can, can just take over. He can, he, can, he can do what he needs to do with you. All that hardship, that, that, that persecution, those troubles you had, God can use you. So God is stronger and greater than your wet fears. So second, you are enough. You are enough. See, when we have passions and dreams and goals, we think that we can't do it. We sit and we look at other people who have started a business or people who have went to college or people that are doing things and we say, I can't do that. But you are enough. See, when God created you, he supplied you with everything you need. Amen. Psalms 139, 13 and 16 says that God knitted you in your mother's womb. When you were in your mother's womb, you could hold the pressures of the world. Think about this. Ambiotic fluid is around the baby in the mother's womb, right? That's the fluid that's holding that baby in. Now, I want you to think about this. Ambiotic fluid is like water. And water has a pressure. Has a pressure. You might say pressure is something that's beating against you. A pressure of 14.5. Pressure of 14.5 pounds per square inch. So imagine a little baby. Surrounded by amniotic fluid, getting that pressure of 14.5 pounds all the way around. And here I am when I was exercising, you know when I was with this movie, and I was trying to get that 10 pound weight, I was like, oh God, I think by five, I was going to stop. Here I am an adult, and I can't even live five, but imagine a baby dealing with 14.5 pounds. God created you to handle enough even as an infant. But we don't understand who God has created us to be. You have to know who God has created you to be. See, a lot of times we don't think about our bodies. But if you think about your body, you just want to praise and worship God. See, when I was teaching science in school, my kids know, when we got to some level, like, well, peace, I thought I can do that. Yes. God did that, boo. Because if we did it, we had to create ourselves. We'd be the best of people, y'all know that. So he created you to be enough. And even at, like Moses, Moses thought he wasn't enough, but God said, I'm with you. I'm with you. You're more than enough when you're with God. So first, God is greater than your what? Fears. And second, you are enough. Finally, don't let nothing stop you. Don't let nothing stop you. If God is greater than your fears and if God created you to be more than enough, then God creates you not to quit.
say this I do, this I do.